I know an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. I know an old lady who swallowed a spider that wriggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. I Promotion! You hold no conviction! You only want the sun! Through this motion picture meltdown! Okay, so if you guys could choose between being a fly or being a spider, what would you be? Philip? Obviously the spider. Why? Clearly superior. I can't fly? fly? Flies eat spiders. And flies they live eat, way, flies eat spiders, spiders. Spiders eat flies, and they live way <laughs> fucking longer, and they're way more scary. Who's afraid of a fly? Uh, Gina Davis. <laughs> <laughs> the no, only... she's afraid of the fly. There's a fucking difference. <laughs> the only benefit you get from being a fly that you don't get from being a spider is the ability to fly, but you're dead in one day. But you get to melt things with your puke. But no, oh, like hooray! <laughs> I've always wanted to live on a turd. <laughs> no shit, and also melt things with puke. No, it's it's called. Even if I was the, was a fly or the fly, I apparently wouldn't have wings. I would just be able to crawl up the wall, which yeah, physically you, makes no sense. Which you'd be the, Spider Man, <laughs> so you could just be a spider. Exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm sure the wings would have came later. Well, see, that was because he wasn't crack. he wasn't done. Right, exactly. I mean, he still he, had to bake a little yet. Yeah, he was still simmering, simmering down. He was simmering down. To, so, to so you pick a spider? What would you pick? Of course, a spider. spider. Clearly superior. Yeah, probably. Well, not only that, not only just superior in all ways as far as like how long it lives, but it's just way more majestic. Just clearly better. Clearly, clearly I would better. pick the spider just to see Brandy's reaction to and waking up blood. next to me in the morning. <laughs> Her, her reaction would be to not be there and be fucking gone as shit. Like, she, I go to bed being me, but wake up as just a giant tarantula. You know, and she just turns her head and sees me, and I've got the eight eyes and the fangs and everything. Good reaction, morning, honey. Her first reaction would either be to leave planet Earth or murder the fuck out of you as fast as possible. Yeah. Whichever one she thought she might be able to do. If there were scissors nearby, you might get scissored in one of your crazy compound eyes. You get splatter all over the wall. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. I love that meme I've seen online and it's like uh, it's, it's a picture of a spider and it says yeah remember that time you threw a shoe at me and I fell off the wall behind the bed I do too <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like the nastiest looking spider ever crazy war wounds and just looking like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger right now <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> alright with that being said welcome to Motion Picture Meltdown I'm your host Stephen the Roast Rosenberg Phil the Kill Collins and we got our special guest D Hart from United Cypher Presents or yes. just United Cipher, or both. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll get back to you doing new episodes of United Cipher Presents. Yeah, I still have a couple of old ones that you know that aren't on iTunes that I'm going to repost because fuck it, they're not on iTunes, so no one's probably listened to them. Yeah, so. that's why we never include dates in our podcast. It's yeah, like there's no reason. this week's episode, which it was really like last month's episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the and uh, the Falcons. <laughs> yeah. I must go home now. My planet needs me. <laughs> so, the reason we were talking about spiders and flies is because we're doing a couple of movies that involve spiders and flies. And we'll Ironically, I would pick being a spider, but I would, obviously, as the two, as a superior of the two, I would choose the fly. Clearly a way better movie. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Just a simple omission of Jimmy Buffett makes that happen. <laughs> Yeah, we'll start with uh, The Fly from 1986. It is a remake of sorts. Of course, the original Fly being from 1958 with Vincent Price and that huge cock that just drove by outside. He's just, of course, the largest penis sitting ever. outside my house with this giant <laughs> V20 engine. He's waiting for V20. Just waiting, just waiting for you to hit record. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, as soon as he drives off, the poor kids next door are going to run out screaming and playing with mud. <laughs> Just 20 degrees outside, kids still playing during the podcast. Oh, yeah. No, no fucking sense at of all. Of course. Well, the, uh, the Fly, of course, starring Jeff Goldblum as Seth Brundle, uh, Gina Davis, and then uh, John Getz as Gina Davis's rapey boyfriend. Like, what about that quote where he's just like, where she, he has her key, 
to her apartment because they used I'll to date. It. Yeah, she's like, "Give me your key back," and he's like, "I think I'll keep it as a reminder <laughs> or something like for that." Old time yeah, sake. for old times' sake. It's like, what are you gonna break in? And it's like, so <laughs> what do you mean you're gonna keep? It's my key. Give it back. <laughs> I I think I'm gonna keep it. What else do you want to take? That's mine. <laughs> Uh, David Cronenberg directed The Fly, and uh, he, I know he's done some Viggo Mortensen stuff, I'm not sure, oh, he did Scanners, of course, and uh, what was that, what was the other big one, Videodrome and The Dead Zone, all pretty awesome movies, um, mm. what, what do you, Scanners, mean? Scanners is awesome, dude, he's, it is, it, fuck it, you, <laughs> <laughs> now, Spider may not be too good, I, have spell I haven't lie. seen the newer see. ones. The newer what? The newer, the newer Cronenbergs. I've seen. Oh. I've seen History of Violence a couple years ago. Eastern I don't Promise. Anything about Eastern it, Promises was badass. Uh, I actually liked History of Violence too. Like um, History sure. of Violence too. No, Revenge of the Violence. History of Violence. No, History of Violence too is a sequel to History of the World. <laughs> <laughs> Part one. <laughs> yeah. But I think Viggo Morrison just straight curb stomps on me in that movie, so it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, anytime you get a good curb stomping in a film, it's it's automatically memorable just for that reason. Absolutely. So the plot of The Fly is Jeff Goldblum is a scientist, and he's kind of like a closet scientist because he, he well, he's kind of reclusive, no pun intended, I guess. <laughs> but he's kind of reclusive, he sticks to himself, and... Uh, he hangs out with Gina Davis. You never really find out why they're hanging out in the first place, except for the fact what that she's mean? trying to... I guess she's a journalist, and she's trying to... He's at some kind of, like, science gathering. I don't know... I don't remember if they say... Partic- it's, like, some kind of convention. She went there, because she works for Particle Magazine or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a science writer. Particle Magazine. Yeah, it's like... What we which is the sister thing? magazine to Molecule Magazine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, she's there trying to get some kind of awesome, you know, new science story. As and, well as some dick. And he's... Well, <laughs> that's what he's there for. Well, he's not there for dick. Seriously? <laughs> What the fuck? Is there a fucking sign in front of your house that says podcast recording now? Do they know that we're trying to... You shouldn't whatever. put in that red light outside. Uh, that goes not. on when you hit the record button. Yeah, exactly. Just, they know we're trying to do just something. Redneck outside. <laughs> <laughs> but any fucking way. So Gene Davis is there to get a story, but he's just there apparently to be become more social because initially he's just like, I just wanted to tell somebody about my work. I didn't know you were there for any particular reason. Right. <laughs> and a fucking idiot. Have you ever noticed that it seems like movies nowadays like just portray journalists as just being sluts? Like it seems like they every movie is just like, Hey, I'm a journalist, I'm gonna fuck whoever I can to get the story. Well that I mean that shit it's not it's not that they're necessarily sluts. It's just that they don't have any morality as, as far as it's concerning getting a good yeah, story. They don't care. That's like, just the media, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say, it's not that they're portraying you know, individual like journalists as being sluts. They're just saying that the media in general are just moral, devoid <laughs> pieces of shit. And the sluttiness comes out as one of those features. It reminds me of Thank Fair. You for Smoking, yeah. where Katie Holmes is like, <laughs> bang, oh, yeah. bangs the Perfect Nick example. Naylor. Perfect yeah. example. Yeah, yeah. But she's totally slutty. <laughs> Not to say that they're slutty or anything, but she's a total slut. Clearly, but and I don't know the fact that she's banging Jeff. Jeff Goldblum is just fucking weird in this movie, and his sweaty mullet, <laughs> like he's he just so <laughs> in eighties in this movie, and he has five of the same clothes. Like, lined up in his closet. So he's just that's naked on Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> I guess so, because that's what she says. She goes, you have five pairs of the same clothes. And uh, he's talking about who did it. Einstein did it. Yeah. And then um, that was, I was thinking that too. And I was like, what about Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> he's, that's, he just walks around. Those are laundry like, day. Just walks around with his fucking tight little ass. <laughs> <His> tight, <laughs> he walks around that, his That scene late. whenever he just got done being transformed into Flyman. And he's just like. Just like a thirty second clip of just his ass. <laughs> it's like, all right, I think we've seen enough. I was I was referring to like where he puts on the extremely tight whitey tighties and walks around to the uh, the refrigerator well, with it. But at least that leaves something to the imagination. <laughs> the, obviously, the parts where he's, you're just seeing naked man ass. That's you know. Yeah. So he comes up with this these telepods, which are transport uh, transporters. Not not with Jason Statham. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not the terrible sequels. I will fucking kill you. <laughs> but um, basically he's discovered a way to teleport from one telepod to the other. And he can do inanimate objects, but he can't do living objects. And that's what he's working on. 
and he tries to do it with a baboon and baboon <laughs> and it turns to soup you're just making us watch movies with baboons in <laughs> yeah this is the second <laughs> movie in a row first you know the first hundred episodes it was all about rape now it's gonna be all about baboons <laughs> hey, we're gonna do shock my neck is it, is <laughs> it, fuck you it, it is a step up don't you think yeah definitely <laughs> definitely there getting to be more mainstream I, I'd have to say <laughs> moving from rape to baboons that's quite you've a seen, uh, you've seen shock my right? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just an angry motherfucking baboon <laughs> <laughs> just straight up pulling your face off you're gonna be on Oprah baboon yeah and then yeah. we'll do Congo with it well those are gorillas but who cares it's just all the same thing <laughs> So, he this thing turns to just meat pie. Like, like it's just like, he's the fucking stupidest goddamn scientist ever. <laughs> he even admits it at the beginning. He's like, actually, I just sort of order shit online. And everybody and else gluing it together. And everybody else does the work for me, basically. So yeah. everybody, yeah. Well, I mean, he's just saying that his real genius is the fact that he knows how to configure these brilliantly manufactured objects together to make something, you know, unique. Yeah. It's not the sum of its parts. Yeah, really. brilliantly. <laughs> well, I mean, it is brilliant. It's, but it's not it brilliant enough to check the fucking telepod before he goes in. Fucking, <laughs> fucking use plants first. <laughs> yeah, How about good, that shit? How about plan. move up from something to something that just start out with baboons? A goldfish. Like, what about anything <laughs> else? What about this? Does anybody else think that he's, like, really short-sighted? Just the ability to teleport... <laughs> Fucking inanimate objects. It's huge. No kidding. No, no Just more semis. forget about the fucking people. <laughs> Forget about people for even forever. Fuck it. Yeah, let's just save the world billions of dollars in air freight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's got to be more than that. Yeah. It, it would be it would, hundreds. It would be trillions of dollars. It would dollars. literally be an unmeasurable amount of dollars. He would, never, he would never have to do anything. Not only that, but it would. the reason that it would be an unmeasurable amount of, of money, because there's no amount of applications it wouldn't be able to go to. Like, for instance, he, would, he even mentioned it in the movie, transporting things into space. Like, literally, rocket ships would be like, fucking car size because you, you all you'd have to send up there are people yeah. and then everything else you can just beam up yeah yeah I mean you could like set up an entire space station <laughs> and like, on a planet yeah that you can just walk into once you get there <laughs> yeah it's... yeah but but you know we gotta you gotta perfect it we have to be able to transport baboons <laughs> but you know the thing and is if you can't transport baboons it's a piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> well once once he finally does get that and, and it jumps out of the machine like it's on fire <laughs> <laughs> Which I probably would, I probably, too, well, I probably would too. But I guess I would, but except for maybe not. <laughs> and then he and then he transports the steak. Yeah, and she 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 tries to eat, and she's like, "It tastes synthetic." It's like, well, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm not sure what that means. Like, what, how did it taste? It pro I guess how's it taste, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah. I guess it tastes like rubber or like. A condom? <laughs> I don't know what happens in that Immediately to a condom. You know, like when you uh, when you get like a uh, regular cheeseburger and at a, McDonald's. And then a veggie burger. And it's like, hmm. I mean, this seems to be meat. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is... There seems there's just, it's, something a little bit it's off. A, it's an uncanny <laughs> burger. It's a, it's, yes. it's a burger, but not as we know it, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, and then he figures out... Well, you know what? I'm just gonna get drunk and fucking teleport myself and say fuck it, because that's fucking smart. Like, like you said, first the stupidest of all, fucking first of all, ever. He has one fucking bottle of champagne that he doesn't even drink by himself because she already had a glass before she left. Yeah. So he gets wasted drunk off a half a bottle of champagne. <laughs> And first then, of all, that's just not possible. And I don't like, even care if you're a toddler. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna jump in this fucking machine and not, not even, check it. I'm not going to check it. There's just no rules in his crazy ass universe. He's like, oh, you know what? You know, it worked on the baboon, which was apparently my first test subject for some reason. <laughs> Speaking of which, how does he have an unlimited supply of baboons? <laughs> yeah, well, where are those coming we're, from? Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Well, if he brothers. ever explains where he comes up no. with the, the massive amount of money that he's got. It's well, buying all cheap, parts. cheap comparatively to other scientists, I guess, and they think. Yeah. They're and he does investing, in him, investing in him because they think, you know, oh, yeah. tiny amount of spending, huge return because he used to be this crazy scientist you know, maybe, that almost won the Nobel Prize. Maybe he it. should have told his investors, hey, I can man, I can teleport inanimate objects anywhere in the fucking universe. Yeah, maybe you should yeah, give me some except, fucking test subjects. Except he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> he's like, well, I invented something. I don't really know what it is, but I need about 30 grand for more baboons. <laughs> Well, I he only had two, and they were brothers. The because he apologizes to the other one, he's like, "I'm no, sorry, I turned your brother into meat." <laughs> there were there were there were two baboons that he had, right? Yeah, and we saw him try to teleport one, and then teleport to the other one. But yeah. before that, he already knew it couldn't teleport organic matter. 
Right. So he clearly already murdered some baboons <laughs> and then sweeped them into the corner <laughs> like the crazy slimy baboon goo. He's you like, watch that, this, watch this, it won't work. Watch, I'll put this baboon in there and it's not going to work. It's going to turn you into the fucking suit. <laughs> you think they were having baboon steaks? <laughs> I mean, what else could they do? Baboon steaks. Well, I mean, it wouldn't taste like human, or it wouldn't taste it's like... It's like, this uh, does take a bit off. Bit off. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's it does. It's made out of baboon <laughs> instead of beef. Well, you wouldn't tell you wouldn't tell the girl that you're trying to impress her. <laughs> <laughs> you tell her on the second date that you've given her a baboon now, to eat. But now that we're thinking about it and getting into it, why would have the baboon that transported and got melted and turned inside out or whatever the fuck happened to it? Why would it have been alive at all? Like it was able to move around and stuff for a few seconds. If well, it was, pure, I think if it was, it was purely synthetic, then how could it be? I think it was is the fact that it was put together. It was just put together the wrong way, but it was done instantly. No, I know so, that. I'm not saying it should have died instantly. What I'm saying is there shouldn't have been anything alive in there if it was just transporting something and then recreating it as an inorganic object. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. Great movie. It's getting way too science yeah, but, but still, great movie, and, and just the plot is so... I, I want to say it's kind of Neanderthalic. Like, it, he doesn't think <laughs> well no he doesn't he's <laughs> fucking nuts yeah well he, I, and then after that he just sort of the definition of a powerful mad scientist hungry. he's sort of the uh fucking what's it he's a reanimator essentially oh. he just doesn't give a fuck oh, yeah. he's like you know what let's test Herbert, it see Herbert what happens. West. Herbert yeah. West. Yeah. um yeah and then when gina davis won't do it i love when he's just like you're such a fucking drag <laughs> <laughs> apparently flies <laughs> flies are known in the early stages of being a fly you're just an asshole. A complete dick. You're just a fucking Yeah, and then dude. when she won't do it, he's just like, fine, I'll go fuck someone else. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you don't want to try out my crazy invention I just invented and then test it on myself because I was drunk and depressed? <laughs> well, fine then, bitch. I'll just go find some fucking gutter rat and then break some dude's gu- just compound fracture some gu- rat. guy's arm in the bar. And then just... And you see that he was like secreting something on his hand and then he's like... <laughs> yeah. Popped out that bone. Okay, I think we've been a little bit hard on uh, Mr. Brundleair, <laughs> but uh, because uh, really he only made one bad decision, and that was to get in the machine and test it on himself. No, he made way more bad decisions <laughs> before that. First of all, he brought some crazy person from Science Convention X back to his apartment, not knowing who <laughs> the fuck trying to get laid. <laughs> well, I understand yeah. that, but the fact of, the fact remains he clearly doesn't give a fuck about like if he really wanted to protect his research he wouldn't just invite random people yeah, to yeah, yeah. to his yeah. apartment he well, does, he mistake doesn't number two that. test it on anything besides a full grown living creature just <laughs> any like a plant a frog a fish a fly for instance <laughs> anything else like why why does it have to be something that's gonna take two and a half hours to clean up out of pod B <laughs> well, I, I think I think uh, might have been using Monkeys, because you know they use them a lot for like a hum- human. You know what yeah, I'm You know what they use before that? Rats, yeah. not mice. Rats, rats, mice. rats and mice. We don't just skip to human trials three minutes into <laughs> okay. invention. Everything after he gets he gets transported. Okay, yes. Once he's thing. turned into That's, a fly man, his you know yeah, his craziness insane. his craziness is incidental just because he's being turned into fly yeah, man. He's yeah. progressively more insane. Which I get. You that. can't blame him for that. I get that. Decisions after being a fly, whatever. Before that, he's just a fucking. Yeah, he, well, he brings that random girl home, and he's just like, "Okay, I fucked you now. Get in the machine." <laughs> and she's like, "No, I'm not gonna do that." And he's like, "What the fuck?" And he's just super pissed. He's like, "Don't be afraid." He's like, "We've just been having sex for four hours. Don't you trust me?" <laughs> yeah. What? Ugh. I'm a little concerned. He fucked this random chick after he was a fly. And we know that uh, Gina Davis is pregnant with Cocoon. <laughs> yeah, <it's> Cocoon. <laughs> so, did this chick have Cocoon too? <laughs> yeah, probably. Cocoon too. <laughs> well, the that's, what, that's what the movie. Cocoon two. <laughs> exactly. The <fly> three. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like zombie. <laughs> <laughs> fucking zombie one, zombie two, and fucking Italian or whatever. And like at this point is when the movie just turns fucking gross. Like it was all But in a really really awesome Yeah, yes, like the, the special the special the special effects were cool with the melted monkey and everything. But then, like, his shit starts falling apart, and he starts peeling his fingernails off. And then he makes the fucking museum of Grundle or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Grundle. Brundle. The Brundle. Grundle. Grundle. When he Brundle. fucking he peels his fingernail off, and he pops the pus in his finger onto the mirror, <laughs> it is the fucking nastiest thing I've ever seen. It's, I mean, it ju- that's just the beginning of the nastiness, though. I mean, it oh, just yeah, spirals out of control after that. And then which his is teeth, awesome. Then his teeth turn all sharp and start falling out. 
And he looks like Shark Mouth. I, I've always hated <laughs> scenes of people pulling their own teeth. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't like, I don't like peeling pencil. your fingers off. At, like, fingernails off. The fingernails off is really bad. Yeah, I mean, I think they, they, I think they do it just to make it even grosser. Like, oh, it's yeah. already, the special effects are already nasty as yeah. hell. Yeah. But then they make it the most personal, like, most nasty shit you can imagine. Right. Like, shit you have nightmares about. Your teeth turning into soap <laughs> and your fingernails... And he's got fucking off. coarse hairs growing out of his back. Yeah. And, like, she's like, they're... oh, this looks normal. I'm just gonna trim it off with these scissors. And it sounds like she's <laughs> cutting steel, by the way. <laughs> it's like, clink, clink. It's like, really? You don't think that's a, something to be concerned about immediately? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you get a little older, you start getting weird hairs. <laughs> That's what he weird says, Weird hairs too. that are made of metal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a steel... Well, I don't want to be old yet. <laughs> like fucking steel wool hair or something like that. Yeah, and then uh, and then after that, you see, before he starts really turning, then um, he finds out that he, he mixed with the fly, and then Gina Davis finds out she's pregnant and has that dream where she, like, she bursts Burst out the, the giant, giant wiggly, wiggly, mag- giant wiggly maggot, and it's all blood covered and shit, and that's nasty. <laughs> and really, I, I was really confused about that scene, though, because at first it seemed like she was having a dream about going to have an abortion, and then it seemed like she was just giving birth. So I don't know if it was just like it's a dream, it's not crazy, a ma- crazy, <laughs> senseless dream logic, where if I was just confused watching it. But either way, yeah. I don't, I don't so know. I was like, is she having an abortion? I mean, it could have been either one. Because, because it wasn't a fully it's gestated roughly, maggot. It roughly <laughs> looks the same way, because we don't know what a fly baby is going to look like before it comes out. Especially a human fly baby. Yeah, a human fly baby, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I guess, pretty disgusting movie all, all around. Well, and, and then after <laughs> that, he though. just starts... Yeah, oh, it's, yeah it's, it's amazing fucking movie. Well, and after that, he just starts like turning into a scaly, like, wart face... And like breaking out and stuff. That but, was that was one thing that I was. Well, I guess I'm just fully confused. What? Why Gina Davis does anything in any movie? But <laughs> I'm especially confused. She sees him accidentally bump his ear and it falls off. And her response to that is to oh. give him a hug. <laughs> like, oh, I feel so bad for you, the, the human. Oh, and he's just covered in mucus. He basically he turns into a crazy like ultra leper. Is essentially what he turns into. <laughs> ultra. He's the ultra. Next- ultra. <laughs> exactly. Like he's he's the he's the leper, but times a million as far as on the nastiness scale is concerned. That's oh, that was really whenever I watched this as a kid and I realized what was happening, I was like, oh my gosh, he got mixed with a fly. That's why they're showing this crazy shot of him being in the machine and the flies on the inside. There, it's like, oh, of course, he's being mixed in. Yeah. He shouldn't be genetically spliced, you know, because you don't see the fly fly out afterwards. Even though you would never have been able to see it, that was the original. There was a uh, a man sized creature with a head of head and arm of a fly, and then a fly sized creature with the dude's head and arm. And I guess both of them were him because he was able to talk and reason as as the, the, the as man. Both pieces. The man, yeah. So, so but the thing ahead. that I, you know, you, go ahead. Well, I was going to say there is a there is a really cool deleted scene that I thought they should have left in the movie. Um, during the part when he's like actually he's not like the crazy muke, like crazy uh, full fly form he's still in the like Spider-Man crawling around the walls fly form and he decides that he's going to hook up his third pod which you don't see in the movie until the very end you, well, don't, e- you don't even see him you don't, see you don't even he's know he's doing brought that brought that into the equation yet right which is kind of cool I kind of like I'm torn about this deleted scene because I can see your argument of why it should be in there because it illustrates a lot of things that he's about to try to put into practice. Right. But at the same time, you realize those things as soon as you see that like computer screen at the end. Well, and I think it's cool just for the special effects factor too. Well, I mean, no, yeah, I mean he he puts a he puts one, the other baboon in in telepod A and then puts a cat in telepod B. And then fuses, and them, fuses into the them together C. in the Telepod C, and it makes I think the ugliest, ruins the nastiest cat dog looking thing you've ever seen. <laughs> cat dog? It, you, mean, <laughs> you mean Babat? Well, yeah, but it's like it looks like cat dog. It looks like a wiener, and then like so it's just got a head on and each. And it's got a head on each it's end. It's a kidney poop you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's like both ends are screeching, and like it jumps out at him, and he's like screaming, and it what, claws what, him. One poops out, we feed to the other one. Yeah, <laughs> he, or bat, babat centipede or whatever. <laughs> I, I can see why they didn't include that because that ruins the ending kind well, of actually now that I'm thinking about no, it no I think what it does is it makes him seem like an unsympathetic character because he knows that something bad is going to come out right. at right. the other end of this the whole the whole logic <laughs> of him 
wanting to fuse him with Gina Davis is that he wants to become a more human creature. Like, because that's what the c- computer tells him. He's, like, sitting there typing at it with his pencil and his crazy fucking Sam Acton finger. And he's, like, <laughs> trying to make this thing work. And... <laughs> and he can't get it to work and so he's like you know typing in there he's like hey computer why the fuck am I a crazy monster and it's like oh in order to be more human you have to fuse with a human mm-hmm. so he's like yeah. okay well that's what it's I'll like, do but human if it really didn't human. work you know, with the baboon cat then well he would have to have an, an a, he would have to one make the baboon cat but he'd have to have another b- baboon to make so it more could... baboonish afterwards I yes. see what you say <laughs> so then the point is I think it just it, it gives away the ending, I think. Like, as soon as you see that, you think, oh, I know exactly what he's going to do. Well, see, and this is the thing, is it's this is right before the ending part. Right, I mean, so, I know that, but... But added on to this part, after that, the thing jumps out at him, it claws him, and kind of, like, opens up part of his side, and he throws it across the room and beats it to death with a steel pipe, and he's, like, kind of upset, and he, and he... Once again, the reanimator. And he, go ahead. and he walks out the, uh, he, here he breaks out the window up top and he's out on his roof and out of his cut, like this crazy fly leg starts coming out. Like, you know, like the ones nice. you see in the end and he looks down at it and he's like scared and fucking breaks, he breaks off the leg and rips it off and throws it out in the alley and stuff. And I was just like, I mean, those are really cool like scenes. finding that. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> it's giant. Like, you just, well, you, somebody filming a crazy horror movie or something? It's like, yeah. you would definitely see, it, there would definitely be a scene after that where a dog picks up and like runs away with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, it's like, oh. The Fly know. 7, Return of the Fly Dog. <laughs> the Fly Dog. The Fly is Well, it dogs. is. It's called Air Bud. Oh my God, I hate you. God. <laughs> Fucking Air Bud. Okay, I just want to get to my main gripe about this movie, and it was the same gripe that I had whenever I was a kid, and it's the same gripe now. He never grows fly wings, which I understand... We talked about that earlier. He never gets the chance to grow any fly wings. That's really the whole, the, the best part about being a fly is the ability to fly. Like, yeah. it's built right into the fucking name. It's called, if you don't get to do that, then you're fucking just crazy the elephant man. <laughs> Pretty you're, much. You yeah. might as well be. Yeah, well, you're just a nasty creature that has, like, half-ass Spider-Man powers. <laughs> Worthless. Well, I do love uh, when the guy, like her boyfriend breaks in and he has the gun he's gonna cause she gets kidnapped obviously Jeff Goldblum breaks in the abortion clinic and steals her first of all <laughs> why does this abortion clinic have a giant wall of windows for him to bust through second of all whose fucking idea was it to have the camera focus on that window for like 10 solid seconds before he busts through it's like oh I wonder what's gonna come through this huge fucking window couldn't possibly be Jeff Goldblum the person who looked pissed whenever she left <laughs> yeah and he just That's like just silly. It's cradles like, her. I wonder who's coming in next. And everyone just looks at the window. <laughs> Behind door number three. And they were just looking at their watches, waiting. You may have noticed that uh, David Cronenberg was her gynecologist. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, so that's funny as shit. And he had also made a movie called Dead Ringers, which is about gynecologists. That, and one of them's like crazy. Oh, I guess they're both kind of crazy. <laughs> and he makes these weird tools for, uh, I think it was tools for working on mutant women <laughs> because, what yeah because he, he gets this weird thing in his head where he thinks all women are mutants <laughs> well he's right <laughs> it's like wait there's no dick here i gotta there's i gotta come up with some new tools <laughs> uh, milk i was expecting something completely different <laughs> one one cool thing about this film that i actually just read mel brooks was a producer on it which is kind of funny <laughs> yeah but yeah. um at that point, like, toward here at the end, this is kind of where the switch goes from the special effects of Jeff Goldblum's makeup just to the, like, creepy animatronics or whatever they fucking used at the end there. Yeah, whatever where, it was, it was straight up fly man. Yeah. Like, it looks really good. Well, actually, right before that, what I, was, what I was getting at is his boyfriend comes in there with a gun and he's, like, pointing at him and he's uh, yeah. not... First of all, this guy's pointing a gun at his head and Jeff Goldblum just... Is the slowest move this to whole the side time has ever. been like crazy monster reflexes because of his fly abilities, and now yeah. he's just like, "Get out of my way, gun!" <laughs> it's like yeah. you had twenty five seconds to pull the trigger. You You're, fucking blew it. Yeah, dude. and then, then he just pukes it. all over his hand, and it just turns his hand into like the bloodiest stump ever. <laughs> Which was kind of silly to me. I feel like they should have at least had his hand move a little bit before it started melting because yeah. he just. He puked on his hand, and the guy was still just making a fist. No! He's like, 
it's but, built now. but the foot puking part where he pukes all over the foot mm. and you can literally see the foot dissolving and bubbling and stuff. <laughs> what I thought was the so grossest cool. about that scene was whenever like Jeff Goldblum pukes on his like basically on his ankle right. to like sever his foot off yeah. and he just starts pulling on his foot like he's like come on I've been waiting like, all day like, come on. he's like ripping his foot off with the loafer attached the to dude it. just passed out due to pain <laughs> no kidding and yeah I mean exactly this is exactly what happens he fucking passes out and then even after Gina Davis blows the fly's brains out at the very end she's still just like where boo hoo he's just like I hate to interrupt, but my hand and feet are both melted off. I'm pretty much gonna die. You yeah. should probably call some sort of ambulance. It's like any kind of rescue people at all. I I assume that he was dead at that point. Yeah, because he, you know, he yeah. just passed out. You, you're missing two limbs. Yeah, and you're, and you're we don't know how we're not maybe septic this is, dead. but I'm assuming it's probably pretty toxic. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then he Gina Davis rips off his fucking jaw. And uh, like pretty much by accident, and then it keeps yeah. wiggling. It just like falls off and keeps wiggling, and then it, he just turns into straight fly. Yeah. Then and he's just the ugly. Kill me, <laughs> yeah, boo, son. I feel like this movie was filmed as like a test to see how gross, gruesome you could make special effects, and then they made the thing. The thing, yeah, yeah, which well, was the like thing was the thing was before this. this. Well, the thing was eighty two. No, I'm just saying, 82. like. To me, I feel like this is like The Thing Jr., which <laughs> doesn't make it a bad movie. I really love this movie. It's way different than The Thing. Special effects, though. Yeah. Very much The Thing. Yeah. I'd say this and The Thing probably two two of the best special effects ever. Ever. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> well, just some uh, some interesting knowledge about this. Mark would be cussing in his uh, chair at the moment if he heard this, but Tim Burton was originally uh, supposed to direct this film. Would have been way. It would have been terrible. Way fucking horrible. Even so if glad was, he did. Even if this was '86 and like in the prime of Tim Burton's good shit, it would have been fucking awful. Mm-hmm. And then Michael Keaton was actually slated to play Jeff Goldblum's part. Ah. Well, nobody could have played Jeff Goldblum's part. No. Yeah, that's I specifically think, Jeff Goldblum. I think he's, he's just literally. And, yeah, he's literally just that crazy. And he's pretty much the same character in Jurassic Park. He's yeah, pretty he, much he, the same character in everything. <laughs> yeah, he's he, always a. Uh, 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 no, he's a. <laughs> I wonder if he's really like him. Chaos. You kind of have to be yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. He is super fly. He's like like moving his head around and twitching. I, and... I like to think of him as the fly in every movie I watch with him. <laughs> well, I will from now on. I mean, I had seen the fly before, but it had been many years. But yeah, I'm so glad that Cronenberg did this because this is what the kind of movie that he does best. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it kind of goes with, along with Scanners too in the, uh, in the special effects way. Like, because of the head explosions and stuff in Scanners is very kind of similar to, like, the yeah. the special effects in this, like, the way it looks and shit. But Definitely. I, I mean, it's just, it's a trademark, and it's amazing. Amazing film. Love it. Let's, let's go ahead and move on to, uh, I'm not going to say a shittier movie, because I actually really it's like this, but... Movie. <laughs> Arachnophobia. It's a way less important, way oh, shittier movie. Oh, absolutely less important yeah, it, and it less is, ground breaking. It's a very fun movie. But as D. Hart and I were talking about earlier, this movie stemmed the fucking fear of spiders into so many fucking people's lives because it terrified me. And I was checking toilets and fucking lampshades and showers <laughs> and everything you can fucking think of for spiders after I saw this movie for like years. <laughs> fucking years I was just like so uh, you're saying you were doing this for years but the real truth of the matter is because of this movie you still do those things <laughs> and you still send me pictures of creepy spiders which I also send back <laughs> I find spiders crazy monsters lurking creature habitats. I just don't fucking like spiders I'm not terrified of them I just don't fucking like them I don't like them anywhere near me you don't like them in a box I don't like them with a fox <laughs> I don't I definitely don't like them with green eggs or ham Neither. I would love them with hands. <laughs> Definitely not hands. I mean, and of course, arachnophobia, 1990. This is one year after the 80s. It's got a very 80s feel to it. Yeah. But yeah. most movies in the 90s had that 80s feel because they were usually started. To, well, I mean, they, they had that 80s feel, but it was a distinctively post 80s, like 90s situation. Right. right it's like right. up until like Jurassic Park, every it's like the first couple of years, those kind of feel like eighty. I feel the same with like Total Recall. Total Recall was like a nineteen ninety movie. Totally Basically like everyone yeah. in Hollywood was still fairly coked up <laughs> and would would seriously green light anything, any terrible plot that came across. Fucking 
Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, which I fucking love, but it would never be made now. Never. <laughs> and we talked about Congo earlier. Frank Marshall actually um, actually directed Arachnophobia, and he also did Congo as well. Um, the movie stars Jeff uh, Daniels, who of course you'd know from Dumb and Dumber, and uh, was like Gettysburg. Speed. Jeff Daniels in Speed. Are you serious? I don't remember. Have Jeff. you never seen Speed? Yes, I've seen Speed. <laughs> I don't remember him in it. Well, I remember. Well, I only remember like a... Keanu Reeves and Dennis Sandra Hopper. Bullock and Dennis Hopper. Jeff That's Daniels was the. Yeah, was he, he was, was in Speed. He was. I know he was in Speed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well sh- shucks, golly, he wasn't. Yeah, no, I fucking just said that. <laughs> And he had an important part. He gets blown up. That's why Keanu Reeves hates fucking Dennis Hopper with a crazy personal passion. Okay, uh, then that must have been at the beginning of the movie. No, That's it wasn't at all remember. the beginning. It was like two-thirds of the way through it, and he'd been on the phone with Jeff Daniels. Well, I'm sorry, Phil, but I've not seen Speed 422 times I've like seen it like you. ten times. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Speed... And you know, most of those times, I was just watching it to see the preposterous <laughs> hill jump at the beginning, which is totally uncharacteristic of the whole rest of the movie. It's just fucking... Dukes of hazarding their asses all the way to the crime scene. And Dennis Hopper's totally the count in that movie, too. Oh, yeah. He's like, I want my money. <laughs> I want it. I want it now. <laughs> my money to me. To me. My money. <laughs> Put it in a dumpster. Dude, side note, at the Peddler's Mall, I was trying to find what movies I could find the most of, and I gave up and just gave it to Speed when I saw four copies of Speed on the same shelf. Consecutively. On the same fucking shelf! Dude, it was a very popular film whenever VHS technology existed. I was like, I bet it's going to be Jurassic Park. And then I just... Jurassic Park is a close... You get a lot of Jurassic Park at the Goodwill, though. <laughs> but so many copies of Speed. Like, fucking everywhere. Oh, yeah. But anyway, back to this. Uh, John Goodman, I think, is the best part of this movie. He's so fucking funny in this movie. Uh, he he, he co- was in Speed. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Um, John Goodman makes makes this movie into something completely else than what it was. Besides Jimmy Buffett, of course. The, yeah. the combination of John Goodman, Jimmy Buffett, and Jeff Daniels with spiders just made this movie silly yeah. as fuck. And but also equally terrifying somehow. Let's talk about the plot a little bit. Uh, there In the beginning, it kind of shows this expedition in Venezuela, and they basically take a thousand a thousand foot drop uh, below sea level between these mountains and basically let off some crazy smoke and it kills all the bugs everywhere around and they find some new species of butterfly and a bunch of new species of spider that the smoke doesn't kill and it renders them like knocked out and everybody's like oh are they dead and bah! the spider jumps out at you of course one of the spiders hitches a ride back because it's waiting in the shadows to jump on the to jump on the dude's clothes and hide in his sleeping bag and get him later. That's yeah, and then hang out there for <laughs> however long it takes to get back to the United States in a fucking crate. Right. And these are tropical Venezuelan spiders, and then they just move up to the fucking uh, North America somewhere, which I'm sure they could possibly live in the climate or whatever. Well, exactly. Okay, it's yeah. like you, you get an exotic snake, and you, you're, you're, you know, you're trying your goddamnedest to make it have the perfect habitat so it doesn't <laughs> die. It still fucking dies. It's called... <laughs> It doesn't fucking live here for a reason. Yeah, but this thing just comes up north, it just right up north and mates with a common house spider, even though it's four feet long or whatever the hell it is, and then has a bunch of giant pulsating nut sacks all over the webs that, that birth babies. Basically, but it doesn't make it any fucking a horror sense. Horror movie after that. It doesn't make any not fucking sense. Not making any real scientific reasoning. It this about is it. this is what makes no sense about the movie, and it's just. Uh, it pisses me the fuck off because they examine the spiders and they say it doesn't have any reproductive organs whatsoever. But then they talk about how it mates with the the common house spider. I think they're talking about the product of its mating with the house fly- the spider. Like like a like a donkey. Not being able to make more donkeys. You, well, or is it a mule? If you if yeah. A horse fucks a donkey and okay. then you get a mule, which can't do anything but work. Yeah, they can't reproduce. The, no, right, the, but works no. Work. <laughs> they're in the beginning when in the very beginning of the movie when they're examining the spider straight out of Venezuela they say that's weird there's no reproductive organs oh is that at the beginning okay. yeah it's in the like first 10 minutes of the film he's like there's no re- that's strange there's no reproductive organs it must reproduce asexually and then it's like 
it mated with the common house spider. And I'm like, how does it mate without reproduction reproductive organs? Well, it can't, but it can't, <laughs> couldn't mate with a common house spider anyway. No! <laughs> Bullshit! It's just totally ridiculous. <laughs> but that's possibly the least ridiculous thing about this movie. I'm just <laughs> glad that they, they did something other than, oh, there's some kind of chemical. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah like monster spider. 19, <laughs> 1960s chemical. You mean 19... Any 1900 <laughs> until 1999 or whatever. Yeah, 19 anything. Oh, there's a chemical. And it still goes on if you watch sci fi. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Which, always some kind of chemical fucking causing a zombie mammoth to come back to life. <laughs> zombie space mammoth. I'm sorry. I saw the worst sci fi movie the other day. And it was mm-hmm. a well, sci fi channel movie. Okay. <laughs> and uh, It wasn't Battlefield Earth, so it wasn't the worst no, sci fi movie. I, I can't remember what the fuck it was called. It was like. Raging Cajun Redneck Crocodiles. Or Alex. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually seen that, and it's fucking terrible. Yeah. You Moonshine. Yeah. Moonshine makes Least, crocodiles yeah. into mutants that can shoot these spikes from their tails, and if they bite you and you live, you become one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, that's some pretty powerful moonshine. That movie is ballsack. And by moonshine, I mean the secret of the ooze fucking Ninja Turtles too. So it's a lot like that. So Jeff Daniels is the the doctor in this town, and he moves this town to become the complete town physician. And the other the old doctor who is supposed to give him this place is just like, nah, I'm not going to give you this spot anymore. I changed my mind, even though you uprooted your entire life to come. So here. basically, Jay Leno did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want it! <laughs> Basically. Yeah. And then people just start dying, including the doctor, because these spiders have di- decided to set up shop in Jeff... Not Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Daniels' uh, barn. Yeah, that's the tie-in. Jeffs! <laughs> <laughs> There's the Jeffs everywhere. And that's another thing, is his wife goes in the barn after they let this little house spider go. They find it in their house, and they let it go in the barn. And she goes back in there, and there's like a nine-foot fucking web across the top of the ceiling of the barn. She's like, oh, that little house spider we released made quite a home in the barn. Or possibly it's a monster spider that lives in the barn. <laughs> it's, it made quite a home in the barn. Yeah. It's like, you think that one spider can make a nine-foot-wide web? <laughs> Do you know a fucking thing about spiders? Anything at all? Have you read a book? <laughs> That's like... Uh, what? What's that Eric Carle book about the spider? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's like the Hungry Hungry Caterpillar. Oh, and then yeah, there's yeah. another one for like a spider that makes a web. <laughs> Just fucking book. Read, read a third grade read book. Read that book. <laughs> yeah. Still you would learn more. <laughs> <laughs> um, the spiders they actually used in this movie were called Avondale spiders. They're from New Zealand and completely harmless. Like they don't even bite. Um, but they are ugly. Like they will just look terrifying. Yeah. They're basically like... Uh, Cave crickets or spider crickets, as I like to call them, they just look sinister and violent, and right. like they will kill your family. They're part of but they don't do shit. They're part of what's called the crab, uh, crab spider family, which is relatively harmless, but they can fucking jump like crazy, and that's why they pick these it spiders. Basically, makes them the most terrifying looking. <laughs> yeah, right, and that's why the actors were al- and, and kudos to fucking Jeff Daniels because. No. Yeah, he was just letting these spiders crawl <laughs> over his face. Must not be arachnophobic. His face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't and know. You, you, I don't know if I could trust a biological, you know, expert or scientist that would be like, no, no, these spiders won't hurt you at all. They can just jump thirteen feet, and they look like the scariest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And you know that they weren't allowed to hurt these spiders. Right. Well, because, no. well the one John like Goodman a... stepped on was definitely real. That wasn't real. Oh, dude, it was dude, the dude. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's why it wasn't real, Steven. You don't step on a spider and then Nickelodeon gag sprays all over the place. <laughs> it, was, it was funny, dude, because the crunch sound they made, that was, was literally just... Clearly just a walnut. No, it was somebody eating potato chips. Oh, was it real? <laughs> yeah. Is that one of your fun facts about it's, this film? It's a fun fact, yep. And well, it could have just as easily been a walnut. The spider that they used for the the uh, the giant male that lived in this basement mm-hmm. uh, was actually a Goliath bird eating spider, which super angry all the time, really painful bite, not deadly, but uh, will basically make you feel like you've got fire on your inside your skin. Yeah. And they get to be the size of dinner plates. Basically, the worst spider imagine. <laughs> well, they eat monkeys in the wild, like <laughs> right. birds and monkeys. And when you have a spider that can eat a monkey, just no. It's well, I mean, the, the nopiest nopes ever. Yeah, just all of the nopes. <laughs> fucking, a spider that can eat a monkey, that's like a fucking stone's throw from a spider that can eat a dude. Like, a whole full-grown dude. I eat him. 
a spider that it can eat a monkey is a spider that can eat a baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And Which is just, just a yeah. little person. Yeah. I mean, believe there it or not. You go. And like, I'm, and I understand like all these people dying in this movie from getting bit because of the toxins so venom that just shuts you down in like five seconds. Whatever. There's stuff out there that can kill you. It's a new species that quickly all the time. However, one big extreme bullshit part in this movie is when the fucking doctor gets attacked by the spider and five minutes later they all get to the barn and he's just hanging from the webs, completely covered in webs. Like, well, I mean, they must have taken a leaf out of fucking Michael Myers' book with the whole, you know, even though you're trying to terrorize and even though it's a really time-consuming thing, you always have to make time to <laughs> position crazy dead bodies in stupid ways to frighten people. Just for no reason Especially these scheming spiders. And, yeah. and like, you know what would really fuck with them? <laughs> yeah. They came in here and that doctor was flipped upside down. And it's like, we joke about that, but that's the way that they, per- that they talk about Literally. these spiders in this movie. They're like, yeah, it's a general spider, and it's sending out all its troops to get everybody. And then the fucking funniest part about this movie is when, like, the characters are standing across the room from the spider, and they, like, move to the left, and the spider, like, moves to the left and is looking at him. And then they move back to the right, and the spider moves back to the right, and is like, yeah? And then Play they... the quickest gun in the West? Is that what we're doing? It's basically just silly. <laughs> just fully, just, yeah. I mean, they must must... you're a child... You probably won't see this movie and think and be afraid of spiders because just this ultimate silliness of the whole <laughs> concept. But yet somehow it inspired an entire generation of people to be terrified of fucking spiders. Right. What was the whole like? Not it was just the, children. I mean, what was the usage of the small spiders? The, the the scary parts like when she reaches behind the shower thing. And the I spider like the jumps on her face. And the popcorn... when it's it, food. You're like, you're supposed to trust it and eat it, you know? Well, and then the spider crawls out of the dude's nose whenever he gets up close yeah. to his face. And that's just fucking terrifying. Because people are always like, Oh, the spider's gonna hatch eggs in my ears! Which it totally... <laughs> I will! Mean, I mean, if, I don't, there's no reason in the world to think that it would. But it could. Yeah. Which makes it scary as shit. Like the fucking earwigs with their crazy pincers and you think oh my god that thing's gonna crawl inside my brain and fucking cut all my and brain fuck me yeah basically <laughs> but they don't do that like no. they, I mean there was no there's no evidence of having it ever happen no oh, well you know there is that episode of uh, Night Gallery oh, that's true where yeah. they, where they put the ear he, he hires a guy to put the earwig in some dude's ear and he puts it in his own like, or they yeah, went to the wrong room. Duh. Or the episode of Workaholics where they get the Whoops. cockroach in his ear or whatever. No, and they have to dig it out with like pliers. <laughs> There's baby cockroaches in my ear. <laughs> Dude, it's a pretty but, fucked up thing to think about. Oh yeah, but but then okay, so we'll go back to to John Goodman in this movie. He's the exterminator and. Jeff, and Jeff, a great A smart ass. Oh yeah, Jeff. Well, Jeff Daniels calls him to uh, to check out the termites in his basement, and he doesn't have any termites. And so his wife asks him, you know, well, what's wrong with the wood then if there's no termites? I'll tell you why. Bad wood. Well, so what do we do? Tear out bad wood. Put in good wood. Oh, okay. Thanks, buddy. I like the fucking <laughs> out west trimmers music that's playing in the background. Oh, this whole fucking soundtrack is fucking fucked up, dude. In the beginning, when all the crazy shit's happening and the dude's being sent back in the casket because he just died, there's like Jimmy Buffett. No, it's like Final <laughs> Fantasy music playing. It's like whistle or like pan flutes and shit going on in the background. I'm like, what the hell is this going must on? Supposed to be South America, dude. No, this was like in America. <laughs> pan <And> flutes. <laughs> this is when like the hearse is driving. The guy down in it. Because he was in South America when he got bit by the spider. Oh, he to, okay. He brought, back, he, he brought back the culture, too? <laughs> yeah. He brought, brought he brought back an entire pan flute band in his costume. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you go to a different culture, you let him bring him back a little bit of it so you can remember yeah, your yeah. trip. God damn it. And apparently he brought back a whole fucking orchestra of fucking... God damn it. <laughs> Get it yeah, out this of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love when John Goodman steps on the spider and he just says, Yeah, that's right. I'm bad. <laughs> Same music. Same fucking music. Well, it's... The, yeah. it's, it's That's the score, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I think my favorite quote by him but is... why is that the score? I don't know. It is Tremors. It's, it's, it's very exactly, Tremors. It's, it's exactly and what And I think is. Tremors is 1990 also, by the way. Well, it was apparently a good year to have movies that <laughs> had creatures in them that would terrify you, but they didn't seem to take it seriously. Yeah. Graboids! I think my favorite uh, quote from John Goodman, though, is when he's looking for the spider um, after they 
find one in the shower in the in the the mayor's house. He permanently lost control of all of his bodily functions. There's no spider here. But I will hunt down the alleged arachnid and spritz him to kingdom come. <laughs> I'm gonna spritz you to kingdom come, Philip. <laughs> John Goodman is great in this movie. Oh, well, he's, <laughs> oh, just basically, he's just basically Roseanne's husband. Yeah. <laughs> he's just a smart ass and just tells you that you're wrong, even whenever it's like, eh. so what's wrong with the wood? It's like, bad wood. <laughs> really? I can tell it's bad. That's why I fucking called your ass. <laughs> well, and before he steps on the spider, he, he's like trying to spray it with this shit and it's not working. He's getting pissed. He's like, why isn't my special acids working? And then he like makes like the most potent acid ever at the end when he goes to the barn and he's just shooting this shit everywhere and it's just burning through all the wood. It's like, I'm going to be an exterminator and go in this dude's barn and destroy it. Well, I mean, at that point, it's like, why do you need an exterminator? I have a perfect exterminator. It's called fire. Just set your fucking barn on fire. Finished. That's true. Hey, but he, they already gave him the job. They can't question his tactics, you know? Yeah. And then... I'll okay. tell you what. I'm going to kill your spider. If you ask me one goddamn question. <laughs> and then, of course, the spider army that attacks Jeff Daniels' house at the end. Like, everywhere he looks, spiders there's fucking do not spiders. Consciously, I don't care if they're new species or whatever. Yes, they, they do. They, they don't <laughs> consciously form armies and, and play chicken and, with you. And mount attacks on your house strategically. It's like, all right, Battalion A, you're going to flank right over here and just drawing on a little fucking. Dry erase board. It's like no. It's like I almost feel like that would have made more sense if they would have, if instead of crossing with normal spiders, they would have crossed with ants or anything <laughs> yeah. else. Well, I mean, ants have or like people. Little, they, right, they at know. least do that. No, yeah, they, like they, they form, you know, clans and like little. They like, actually mate squads. with military. <laughs> That's arachnophobia too. It actually mates with the ghost of fucking Pat, General Patton or something. No, they. Uh, oh, it has to be his ghost. No. It, and they do all the, like, instead of dry erase board, they do all the, like, directions and stuff in webbing. Of course. Of course. <laughs> you go there and, like, we have it. We have the spider's master plan. <laughs> but it's I feel like, like that'd be a dead giveaway to anybody who'd, like, walk in the barn. It's like, <laughs> why does it say uh, new Jeff humans. Daniels' house in webbing in the Which barn? makes me... Makes me think about Charlotte's Web, and uh, it's like, I don't. Who cares what the web says about a pig? It says stuff. A spider wrote it. <laughs> pig didn't write it. It's like, oh, it's so like, the that's spiders. A pretty, that's what, a pretty fucking amazing the spider. Thing, I'm gonna catch that spider. The thing that you're yeah. so fascinated is is that the spider is obsessed with a pig. That's what your that's your takeaway. It's a spider that knows English. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. And these spiders know way more than English. They know how to form, you know. Tactical plans to launch attacks on people's houses. Yeah. Totally silly. Totally ridiculous. But, once again, still terrifying for some reason. I so, guess because they use real spiders. The real spiders in this movie, it's just the same thing as watching a you know Animal Planet yeah. episode. Where you're watching it and you're seeing all the crazy monsters and you're like, well, I'm not going to sleep for a couple months now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you get to the end where Jeff Daniels just gets his ass whipped by his basement. <laughs> like... So he just, he keeps seeing the spider and he it's just fucking slapstick. Like he fucking runs into the wine wine shelf and it falls on him and like wine wine bottles are breaking on his head and shit. The Benny Hill theme is playing in the background. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it might as well be because because like he's like oh no the spider and he'll trip and fall through the fucking wall and like paint cans will fall on his head and shit. He's like I feel like the takeaway of this movie might actually be. Strangely enough, even though the spiders really are launching these attacks and being super terrifying and killing half the town's people, I feel like the takeaway is, oh, you have a spider issue? Call a fucking exterminator. <laughs> oh, you have crazy fear of spiders that causes you to run into call walls Call an exterminator. Shit. It's like, how about call an exterminator? Oh, you called an exterminator? Well, maybe over. <laughs> that makes no sense. Yeah, obviously. Well, and then... then... <laughs> He keeps fucking throwing... Grow some fucking common sense. He keeps, All you have to do to fight spiders. He keeps throwing cognac on the spider. And it, the like, spider's just getting drunk and more mad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's an Irish spider. Yeah. And, well. so, <laughs> and so it's like following him or whatever. And he's trying to find it. And you just hear... And it's like, where is it? And he's like looking in the pipes and shit. And it jumps out at him and makes him fall in another fucking four shelves and get knocked over or whatever and it crawls up his chest when she has this wooden plank on his chest 
Oh, it, no. And it gets on the wooden plank, and he sling or seesaws this fucking spider across the Catapult, room. Into, yeah, yeah. Into fire. Fire! <laughs> and then the spider runs the thing, out on fire. Yeah, you hear the thing, like, screeching and stuff like that. And then it ejects itself out of this fire after him. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, like, well, if I'm going down, you're going down too, bitch. Because he knows what fire is, and he can also use it to attack people. I don't know that there's anything scarier than a giant spider on fire running at you. Except for that you know in, like, three seconds it's going to be dead. <laughs> and it couldn't possibly traverse the distance between the fire and Jeff Daniels. <laughs> yeah. It would literally take no time at all for that tiny amount of carbon to be burned away. Right, right. But no. So this is what happens. The spider is on fire and jumps toward Jeff Daniels, who then pulls out a nail gun and accurately shoots the spider from across the room and nails it to the electricity box. And uh, electrocutes it. And it electrocutes it to death and pops its sack and everything. So basically, what, the, what pops its sack? <laughs> <laughs> Just five. I love uh, it. Basically... This is not just a spider, but it's also the reincarnation of Rasputin in the form of a spider. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do, set it on fire, cut its face off, nail gun, like electricity. You have to do all of those things before it will die, and even then, it probably still curses you to have to go through arachnophobia too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very surprised it was never a sequel to this. Honestly, though, the pro- it, it is its own sequel. It's usually whenever a movie like this comes out the sequel comes out and it's just a little campier and there's a little bit more comedy and it's just a little stupider and a little worse but this movie was all those things already <laughs> so they were like you know what Arachnophobia 2 no need and then finish up with that fucking Jimmy Buffett original song for this movie it's the worst it's the fucking worst what what happened in the 80s and 90s and it maybe I mean it still happens today but I guess a list, just a lot less commonly and it, with fewer blockbuster movies Artists writing songs about a film, and then quite literally just, it's like, oh, I have a song for you, Huey Lewis in the News. We need you to make a song, and basically we're just going to tell you the title of the film, and you have to make a song based on that. And then they do. And that's the fucking, (laughs) it's like, really? You can't just, and usually the songs have nothing at all to do with the film because Uh, of that reason. I'm pretty sure they're like, all right, we're going to need a song for this movie, and it's going to have to play in the credits, and everyone's going to think it's so good and funny. I got the perfect person, Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett. Buffett. Jimmy Buffett, <laughs> because he always writes songs about bugs and spiders. Yeah, <laughs> so, all the time. And so we'll just tell him write a write a song about spiders. It doesn't really matter what. Can the spider be on a beach? <laughs> <laughs> Drinking a margarita and eating a cheeseburger. Wait a minute, is, are spiders those things that dissolve when you put salt on them? That ain't gonna work with my whole margarita situation. <laughs> They swim in the ocean, don't they? <laughs> they swim in the ocean. How about instead of a spider, I give you a crab? <laughs> I know I got all crabs. about I got crab songs out the ass. <laughs> I'll just switch the word crab and spider. Most guys are related, right? <laughs> Fucking terrible. So yeah, what was the issue with like what was the what was the fucking thinking? We'll get Jimmy Buffett to write the song for this. And then it was like that with every fucking movie. Ninja Turtles had Vanilla Ice. Four different songs for all the different movies. (laughs) Really? What you guys talked about Stephen King last week. One of the things that really bothered me about that movie, there's almost no there's like no outside music in the movie. But the song at the end I just fucking hate. Like, I don't want to be buried. Well, that's buried. that's actually the Ramones. That's that I was know. that was they the, had a, they had a, they the trucker was listening to the Ramones whenever he ran over the kid. Yeah, and yeah, I thought yeah. that was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it is hilarious. But, but yeah, I hated it, the it, exactly. But it just you're right. It. Yeah. It's like remember you know that movie you just watched? Well, it's a commercial piece of shit because <laughs> this is how we prove it by yeah. showing you that we got Jimmy Buffett who knows nothing about spiders to write the song <laughs> about spiders. Like, if they had at least gone anywhere with it, like, let's get Ozzy Osbourne to write the fucking song for it. How about that shit? He writes songs about creepy gr- creatures all the damn time. Yeah. Bites off the heads of bats. How about him? <laughs> nope, Jimmy Buffett. Glenn Danzig would be a great Dude, person yeah. to have done that. <laughs> this is what, how, I've, uh, how I've explained this before, Philip. What the director or producer do is they get a big fucking magician's hat and they put a bunch of fucking different names in there. They put actors, fucking singers. They put everything. That's how fucking Taboo from uh, Black Eyed Peas got gets casts and shit. Yeah. But like they just take this giant hat and then they they get their five year old son to reach his hand in there and he picks something out. And if he doesn't like it, he picks something else out. And then he's just like, oh okay, well Jimmy Buffett works. <laughs> so. 
That's yeah. how Coolio gets movies too. Yeah. <laughs> Pterodactyl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but really, was Jimmy Buffett even commercially successful in 1990? I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. successful ish, but I, was that like the height of his powers? It, yeah, it was. That ni- really? early 90s. I would have thought 80s. it would have been like late 80s, eight, or what? like not late 80s, but like mid 80s. Mid 80s, mid 80s and early 90s were, were big Jimmy Buffett. So, so I was right earlier. They were just still coked out and still listening to Jimmy Buffett. Yep. <laughs> So basically, every movie in the early 90s is just a fucking, you know, cold turkey director that quit doing cocaine and... S- cocaine. C- <laughs> Fuck you. And is, and is, Baboon's doing cocaine. And he's still trying to listen to Jimmy Buffett even though he just now realized it's not good anymore, he's not on cocaine. I love how Phillip's using cocaine. Like, it's anywhere fucking near the same kind of word. Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll wrap things up t- with saying that you should definitely watch The Fly for sure. That should be a staple. That's a staple in my horror movie collection. Like, it, oh, yeah. it has to be there. I don't own Arachnophobia. I will never own Arachnophobia. I do enjoy the movie for its... It's It's a fun movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. It it's a fun a, creature it, feature. It's a fun movie. It's a really good movie, I think. I still think it's good, even despite the fact that I've been making it's fun It's the of best it. spider movie ever made. I right. mean, like... I the, mean... If you look at the p- terrible pieces of shit... That have been made, like, Spiders and Spiders 2. Actually, you know, I did hear that there's this hilarious movie. Uh, I can't remember who just directed it. But there's this uh, there's this new movie that just came out. It's just called Big Ass Spider. And it's supposed to be really fucking good. But I haven't I haven't watched it yet. But like Arachnophobia, it clearly doesn't take itself seriously. So where's, where's, this, where's the horror movie about a spider that they actually are afraid of the spider... Or at least, at least they want you to be afraid of it. They're not just making mm. it into a mockery of itself. Like, I, I, how are we going to kill this spider? Well, we'll just hire a badass exterminator. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything that's uh, but remotely remotely, remotely yeah. recent. Yeah. I mean, as far as creature features that, uh, you know, where it's kind of played off as a comedy, because really only one guy is doing anything funny in the movie, and that's John Goodman. Yeah, but he's in the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but uh, everybody else is more or less playing it straight, even though Jeff Daniels is a little bit slapsticky. Yeah, he's playing, the, he's playing the straight He's playing it straight, yeah, yeah. And that story that he tells about being scared of spiders because of the one crawling through his crib at two years old. First of all, why the fuck was he in the crib, crib at two, two years old? <laughs> and secondly, he talks about the spider coming through the sides of his crib that he remembers bullshit. Fucking bull Weapons grade balonium. <laughs> I'm not going to call bullshit on remembering things from when you were two. I, had, I remember a couple I had things. memory from being... I know I wasn't three yet, so I know it was at least... Maybe I was two, maybe I was younger than that. But it's so vague and so not important that it's... You clearly would not form a fucking phobia. <laughs> you would be, maybe be more fascinated by a spider at that age than you would be afraid. Yeah. Just because why the hell would you be afraid of it? And she even said... Uh, it was a daddy long legs or something. Just not even. And then he's like, it's giant long. hairy legs. And I'm like, daddy long legs, giant hairy they legs. Yeah, they, it's like, <laughs> you would have to have supervision to be able to see hair on your fucking legs. <laughs> supervision. You, well, you Fly would. vision. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, their legs are like, they're like threads. <laughs> yeah. You know? They're yeah. A thread thin. I'm sure there are hairs on their legs, yeah. but they're so small. They're, I guarantee microscopic. You, you cannot Absolutely. fucking see Absolutely, microscopic it. A baby hairs. can't not fucking see hair on a daddy long legs legs. No. Not fucking possible. <laughs> Just super. So basically, Jeff Daniels, fuck you, you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah. But I will say that you should watch both of these movies. Speaking uh, of Jeff Daniels. What? Dumb and Dumber 2 is coming out soon. Yeah, it Next is. Year. It is. Uh, also... Home, uh, not Homeland. Um, the Newsroom. If you haven't watched the Newsroom, fantastic Jeff Daniels. Uh, but I'm not sure. Is he uh, faced with any spiders in this newsroom? Yes. Are, are, yes. Is there a big infestation of spiders? Well, he's, he's actually he parents. works with Jim Carrey, <laughs> no. and he wears uh, a dog outfit. American Revolutionary clothes and fights spiders. That sounds like an awesome movie. <laughs> yeah. I want to see that. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> And Dennis right. Hopper. Actually, he fights dead From Dennis Hopper dead? as a giant spider. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> and he now, writes the news about now it. that I'm thinking about it, we were talking about movies where there was not really a spider being taken seriously or a spider being terrifying or any good at all. I guess you could say Lord of the Rings with... Uh, oh, Shelob. Shelob is and fucking Harry, terrifying. And Aragorn. Aragorn. Aragorn from um, Harry from Potter. Harry. 
Both of those are fucking worst. Shoe Lob is better special effects, I think, as far as convincing you that the spider wants to fucking kill the shit out of you. Oh, yeah. The other one looks more fuzzy, more harmless, still terrifying. Well, well one is let, made for all ages, and one is made specifically pretty much marketed. Well, for in kids. my opinion, that's yeah. one of the scariest fucking Harry Potter parts. Like, not just because I don't like spiders, but period. Like, when they're running through well, the because woods. She, she's like, well, I pretty much have to feed you guys to my children. Yeah, I'm not going to eat you, but everybody else here is. Bye. Even though they fucking listen to me and do what I say, and I'm, sh- I'm supposed to be your friend because... Whatever. It's stupid. Yeah. Uh, that was something that I never understood and thought was total bullshit. <laughs> but, the, in other words, the spiders. Very creepy. Very scary. Yeah. When they're attacking the, you know, they're and trying to escape really fast. Dude, she loves these nightmare, nightmares, dude. Fucking, no fucking terrifying. Shit. It's nightmare fuel. Oh, yeah. For sure. And they don't, and they take that fucking spider seriously as shit, and there's no n- number of fucking um, Roseanne's husbands that can take it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, no number of Roseanne. A so Tom Arnold and John Goodman could not take it down. A league of Roseanne's husbands. <laughs> An extraordinary Roseanne oh, gentleman just would imagine, not be able to take him down. Just imagine Tom Arnold and John Goodman versus Sheila. On a team? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Awesome wrestling match. Cage match. <laughs> but, oh, uh, wow. We'll yeah, wrap things. We'll now. fully wrap things up by plugging a few things. Check out fivefingertees.com. Uh, we talked about them a little bit last week. They have awesome prices. They do eight ninety nine for shirts on a day on the daily. And also, if you like their Facebook page, you get put in a drawing to win the special shirt of the day or week or something like that. So do that. Yeah. If all you have to do is like their Facebook page, you could win a shirt. And so, you know what? You probably want to like it anyway, because Stephen just told me about a shirt earlier that I am for sure going to get. Oh yeah, the Home Alone shirt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Super awesome. <laughs> um, also. Check us out on iTunes. Rate and review us. Subscribe. It's all for free. Ooh. Free. Check out MattCypher.com. <laughs> yeah, course, uh, by, the, by the time this will be out, you'll be able to go on our new music page. Hey, what are you saying? What are you saying? What? <laughs> also, D-Hart, I you're... I put it up like later today. <laughs> <I know. laughs> also, you're setting up a fan feedback page for us. Yeah. Eventually. So, if you want to tell us what you like or don't like about the podcast... Actually, don't tell us what you don't like because we don't give a shit. Yeah. But secondly, <laughs> uh, if you want us to do movies that you want us to roast, let us know. And we will do what we can to do that. It's very hard to convince Mark to do anything. But me and Philip will watch Except anything. Me and things. Philip will sit through two homeless people jerking off dead elephants. In other words, we will sit through that, but we definitely can't sit through the island of Dr. Moreau. It's not Santa Sangre. Yeah. <laughs> dead elephant. Uh, uh, what you, comes out of his dick? Why do you know this? I watch a lot of movies. <laughs> uh, All about, movies. About jerking off dead elephants. <laughs> well, it wasn't jerking. It wasn't being jerked off, but blood came out of an elephant's dick. I, you fucking remember shit like that. That's true. <laughs> that would have scarred me real bad. Uh, real permanent. <laughs> check out Empire Comics. Check out 76th Street Network for some awesome podcasts. Check out our buddies on Return of the Living Podcast. They do a lot of stuff. Uh, they're actually getting ready to start their third season. Um, you can check them out. They talk a lot about horror, mostly horror movies. And it's uh, the name. Yep. And also check out Nerdonomy. Awesome podcast. And that's pretty much all I have. And I'm Stephen the Roast Rosenberg. And And we will see you next time. Let me twirl in Yeah.